He hit it again. I banged it on the other side because I knew the corners. I found out that he's that type, that he stayed in the middle. It's easy. Fourth one, I didn't bang it. He was expecting that bang, but I just went slowly like this. He came quickly and he fell down on the board as well. <laughs> How many nil? Four nil. Not on with me. So, four nil. And now he was getting worried. I can see his hand is going like this slowly. Because there's a lot of people, they know him that he's number one. And the mother said, you know what they're doing? They said, <sighs> that may be even scared as well. He's got a lot of supporters. He hasn't got much supporters. We hold Madrasa is there. When they heard that it was 4 nil, people from the second floor, third floor, dormitory, everyone started going. Even those stars and the supervisor, they were going, <laughs> So now it was 5 nil. How many left for whitewash? Two more left for whitewash. SubhanAllah. I gave him 6 nil, and then it was 7 nil. And he came and he shook hands with me. Uh, he thought that I would not be able to win him. But I had inside myself that you're not going to win me. This is how I was inside myself. You're not going to win me. When it was time to recite the Quran as well, you know, people used to recite only at the time when the classes were there. At night time when people were sleeping, I used to wake up and I used to tell, you know, Chacha Hamid was there, you know. Chacha Hamid. I used to get the keys from him. No one's awake. At that time, I used to recite and recite and recite. There was one thing in there that I used to always, not out of boast, I used to come number one. Even now, if you, you, you can make inquiries. Number one all the time in every classes. Number one. Once it was an occasion whereby I came number two. Even the principal, he was shocked. Yeah. What's number here? You guess what was that? Dusra number is the number one. So, Dusra number is the number Who took the Imtihan? So, they found out the person who got first and number one, it was his Batija. You know what Batija is? That Batija is number one place. So, basically, again, they called Monara Yusuf Mutala. You know what Monara Yusuf Mutala? From Bari Madrasa. Special invitation. And Mawlana Yusuf Mutala, he came, and then after he came, he took the test of the whole class again, and he took my test in the middle, and he told me, Aap kyo hai yaha side pe beta rahe. Sit down on the side. So I thought that, yeah, okay, yeah. Why is he telling me to sit down on the side? I was a small midget, again, small boy, on the side. So, after everyone's finished, Haris Patel is there, all of the Mawlana Kamal, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, one of the great ustads in Nahwan Saf as well, he was there as well. And they all, you know, they all wanting Habibul Rahman again as well. Because they're used to number one, number one. So Mazra Yusuf Mutala Ali said, okay, abhi jo hai aap padho. Jaha se chahe waha se padho, aur jab mein kahunga, tab tum jo hai thamna. Until I say, I'm reciting one quarter, nearly two quarters, nearly a half chapter I'm reciting. He's not telling me to stop. When should, when should I stop? And at that time I was very strong, mashallah. Youth, youngster, reciting the whole, big hall, bigger than this hall, about three times bigger as this, this hall, that hall was. And all those stars are there as well. But I'm reciting. After reciting, he told me, Bas, sun liya mein. Mere pocket mein jo hai, jitna bhi paisa hai, sab tumare liya hai. Jitna paise hai mere, mere pocket mein aaj, sab tum, I'm talking about how many years ago was that? You know how many years? Huh? No, more than that. 26 or 27 years ago. Okay? 26, 27 years ago I'm talking about. And one of the most important took out, you know, 250 pound notes of that time. And those notes I still have in my book. I haven't spent it yet. Uh, so those were the youth time and young time when there was zeal, uh, strength and the power. Rasulullah uh, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah is surprised over a youngster. When? When the youngster 
he does not go against the ways of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's surprised, shocked to see that he's young, he has the power, he has the zeal, huh? he has the uh, strength in his body as well. I gave him, who gave that strength? Allah gave that strength. But despite all of that strength given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is shocked and surprised to see. It's a surprising for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when the, everyone else is going in the wrong path because they see that I have got power and they abuse their power. Their power becomes a curse. Huh? Youth age, young age, our powers become a curse. We're so strong, we're so active. Now our eyesight, they don't stay within the boundaries. They start committing other things which are haram. Our eyesight becomes a curse for us. Our hearing becomes a curse. It was supposed to be used in where? Things that are halal, to listen to things that is halal. Huh? But what, we, what do we do? We break the boundaries of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We break the boundaries of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this youth is a gift of Allah. Just like life is a gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From beginning to the end, it's a great gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And within those times of life, the greatest moment and time is the time of youth. <laughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran There are four seasons in a life of a person. How many seasons? Four seasons. Just like we have four seasons. What's the best season? The best season is the summer season, isn't it? People look forward. They want to go to this country. They become active as soon as they hear the word summer, the season summer. In the same way, in the life of a person, there are four seasons. In the mother's womb is one season. The childhood is another season. And the youth is another season. And the old age is another season. And what's the best season in the life of a person? The youth. Young age. At that time, there's no headache. At that time, you know, the bones are not crackling. Whereas when the people become old, when they get up after 10 minutes, oh, what was that? But when you are young, you get up and behind you, the chair also falls. I'm so strong. That's the beauty of, you know, youth age and young age. At that time, you want to run, you want to go there, you go there very fast. You leave the elderly people behind. Uh, that's the power Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives at that time. At that time, your voice is loud as well. At that time, the power of picking up things, taking away things, is you have all of that power as well. And that is the time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to spend that time and invest. Now we're going to invest. What is the best thing that we can invest in? Our time. And out of the time, it is the time when we are young aged, a boy or a girl, or a youngster. And the ulama have defined a youngster to be between the age of 12 to 40. Although others have defined it until they become old, until they become ill. But during this time, we have the strength. We have to utilize that strength and utilize it in our time, which is the most precious thing. But time is something that we never ever anyone can catch. So how do we spend it? Uh, how do we invest in our time? Time is something that no one can catch. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in the Quran, there's a, there's, a, there's a surah in the Quran and that surah is known as Surah Al-Insan and also that surah is known as Surah Al-Dahr. The surah is called Surah Al-Insan and also called what? Surah Al-Dahr. Insan, human, and Adah means time. So there's a big connection between Insan and time. They both are important. Insan is the capital, and time is the actual investment. Huh? So time is very important, but if we want to invest in time, there's no way. How can we invest in time? How can we gain? Because when we invest, you have to accrue, accrue something. You have to gain something. But Allah says time is very important in another verse. What did it say? وَالْعَصْرِ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرِ 
والعصر by the nature of time الله سيس والعصر by the nature of time والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر indeed إنسان is in great loss so he has time but he's in loss but how can he invest to make gains and not, not loss the only way is the one who created us will tell us that how can we invest in time and gain by investing in time because anything that you invest any assets that you have in this worldly life you can have for a temporary amount of time but once you're gone it's all gone it doesn't increase an investment is that what increases so how do we know the only way to know is the one who created us. He will tell us, and that is the akhirah. The only way to accrue and invest and gain something in time is through akhirah, through doing things for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So while we are youth and young age, that is the most beautiful time and the best time when we have the zeal, when we have the enthusiasm, when we have the power, when we have everything that we want no illness at all that is the time when we need to invest and that is the time when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves his servant when they do whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells them to do and that is why in one of the hadith Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says rabbuka, your Lord is surprised to see who Shabun, a youngster huh? Shabun, the one who does not go away from the right, uh, right path. He stays within the right path. And then he controls his mind and his desire. One of the things that we tend, to con we tend to follow in our youth and young age is our mind. What do we follow? Huh? I want to go out. Let's go out. I want to eat. Let's eat. Huh? There's no guidance. We just follow our mind. And during Salah time, we just do that as well. During time when it's important, we do that as well. So that is why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had said in one of the, another, another hadith, the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam went and visited a youngster. Never think that because we're young, you know, death is not going to come to us as well. Just two weeks ago, a 30-year-old youngster passed away. No. Over six foot tall, very muscular, very strong. Never I had imagined that he would pass away. <coughs> and we know in our life, hundreds of others who have passed away, who never had any illnesses as well. They were in their youth age, young age. The Prophet Ali Salatu Wasalam, he was visiting a youngster. Ala siyaqil mawdi. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Kayfa tajiduka? How do you find yourself? How are you? How do you find yourself and how are you? So this Sahabi he was a believer, so he's a Sahabi, the companion of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, Arjullah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah. At the time of death, what is this youngster saying? He realized the reality of this world and the hereafter. He replied to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, Arjullah, I hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive me. Youngster, you say, Arjullah, I hope that Allah is going to be good with me. Arjullah. At the same time, he say, he doesn't stop. He says, Wa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I also fear the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah. He's saying, Arjullah, I have great expectations in Allah from Allah. I hope so many things from Allah that He's going to do for me. But at the same time, I fear that according to his expectations, many things may, may have not been done. And I fear the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he smiled at him. And he gave him a reply and he said to him, good news to the Sahabi, a youngster, a youth, who was just on his deathbed as well, on the way to death, towards the road towards death. What did he say? What the Prophet Ali said was the says. He said, any person who has these two qualities, huh? any person who has these two qualities, and they have hopes in Allah, and at the same time they fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him what he hopes in Allah. Allah will give him what he hopes. 
وَأَمَّنَهُ مِمَّا يَخَافُ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect him from what he fears. Allah wa ta'ala. And this is the way we youth and youngsters must live our life. After doing what is right and righteous from the Qur'an and Sunnah, huh? what do we do? We follow it and at the same time fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well. Sometimes we have a, such a life whereby the things we do, it's as though we don't even care, we don't even bother. Although Allah has given us everything that we need, everything was created for us, not for anyone, not for the animals, not for the angels, not for any other creature. Every single thing was created for his human being. What more do we want? And after we were human beings, we were given the best of everything. And that is Iman, the greatest thing on the surface of this earth. To a human being, the greatest present is the present of Iman. Say Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Greatest present. La ilaha illallah. Muhammad Rasulullah. Greatest ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, one of the Shaykh of Baghdad, he was sitting down and people used to come to him with complaints and good news and whatever used to happen. And a man, elderly man, he came running. Huh? He was taking a lot of breath. He's going, oh, oh. and he came, Shaykh, Shaykh, my house has been burgled. Oh, I want to go to do this. And the Shaykh, he smiled at him. Alhamdulillah. What did the Shaykh say? At that moment, what was the Shaykh supposed to say? But what did the Shaykh say? He said, Alhamdulillah. So this man who ran, elderly person, he ran and came and complained about his you know, house being burgled and everything gone from the house. He was so angry, he said, You can have yourself. Karim Mumasa was just. I don't know what I said. So the Sheikh was asked that why have you said Alhamdulillah and why are you smiling for? I don't understand. So he said, I'm not laughing and smiling because your house has been burgled. Sasa. I am smiling and I have said Alhamdulillah and praised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because although your house probably has been burgled, but your Iman has not been burgled. <laughs> but Iman, you still have said La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. That's the greatest gift Allah has given us, that greatest gift. And then Allah has given us the greatest gift of deen, which is Islam, chosen us for, uh, for, for us, uh, Islam, deen, Islam. The greatest prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Muhammad Rasulullah. And that is, he is our prophet as well. Great of everything has been given to us. And while we are young, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expects us to be directed towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to do. And there are so many examples. Malik ibn Dinar is an example. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu is another example. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu another example. Huh? Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu another example. Abu Yazid Busrami rahmatullahi alayhi at the age of six, he's a youngster, not even reached the age of proper understanding. We don't, we don't classify someone at the age of six to be a proper understanding child. But even at that time, at the age of six, he questioned his father and he said to his father, Oh father, why don't you allow me to do Salatul Tahajjud? Let me do Salatul Tahajjud. And the father said, Anta ba'd. You are still young. You shouldn't wake up because you need to sleep eight hours, the doctors have said. You know what the answer was of Abu Yazid Mustami Rahmatullahi Alayhi? Abu Yazid Bustami Rahmatullahi Alayhi had said that, Oh daddy, today you are not allowing me to do Salatul Tahajjud. To tomorrow on the day of judgment when Allah asks, I will say my father did not allow me to do Salatul Tahajjud. <coughs> and at that time the father was guilty. And he said, Okay my son, I cannot stop you. You do your Salatul Tahajjud. Abu Yazid Bustami Rahmatullahi Alayhi began to do Salatul Tahajjud regularly from the age of six. And there are so many other examples. 
So many other examples. A really youngster, Malik ibn Dinar, he meets, and that youngster, I'll be quick, that youngster sometimes is laughing and sometimes is crying. Am I taking too long? Sometimes he's laughing and sometimes he's crying. So Malik ibn Dinar, when he looked at him, he was about to say salam. He was about to say assalamu alaikum. But when he saw him, you know, laughing and crying. <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden something came in his heart. He remembered, he was reminded by Allah that the Prophet Muhammad Rasulullah he used to give salam to the youngsters. So regardless of what his situation was, Malik ibn Dilan he said, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, following the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this youngster, he stopped crying and laughing and crying and laughing. He said, Wa alaykum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, ya Malik ibn Dinar. <laughs> Malik ibn Dinar was shocked. He said, Zee manushi ame fakun hoi si, ee manushi ame namazal lukina, ee sudu bachye namazal lukina. He said, how do you know my name? He was at the time when all of the ruh got together. Allah. He touched the back of Hadrat Adam والسلام, and after touching the back, all the ruh that was supposed to come to this world, all of them came out from the back of Hadrat Adam والسلام. at that time I met you and now I know you as well. From that time, a youngster, Allah, if he wants to give a, a gift of knowledge uh, of ghayb to someone else, then uh, that's possible. And that child had it. So Malik ibn Dinar, knowing that he is a gifted person of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a child of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, I see you playing, uh, sometimes laughing and sometimes crying and playing with all this. I want to ask you a question. Can you tell me what's the difference between nafs and aql? Mind and intellect. Mind is something which we just follow, don't we? We don't follow our intellect and our knowledge, our ilm, right path. So what's the difference between mind and intellect? intellect? So the child, you know what he said? Mind is that which stopped you and prevented you right at the beginning from saying salam to me. What am I in with you? Your intellect is that what came and ordered you to say assalamu alaikum afterwards. Listening and reminding yourself of the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. <laughs> so he said, why are you playing with this soil? He used to take soil from the earth and go like this, play, play, play. So why are you playing with this soil? He said, you know, every time, this is a child, a youngster, we're talking about, who understood the reality of this world and that's why his situation is like this and Allah has made him like this. So he says, the reason why I'm playing with this soil is because whenever I am reminded of this verse in the Quran, Minha khalaqnakum wa fiha nu'idukum wa minha nukhrijukum taratan ukhra, then I see myself as soil, nothing else. Huh? That's why I'm playing with this, to remind myself. And he keeps on playing with this soil. That was what he was doing. And then he asked him, how comes you cry sometimes and laugh sometimes? That's the first bit which stopped me from giving you salam. What is the reason? Oh Malik ibn Dinar, the reason I cry sometimes is because when I am reminded of the verses of Jahannam. When I am reminded of the verses of Jahannam, it makes me cry. And when I am reminded of the verses of Jannah and the beauty in the Jannah, then it makes me happy again. Again, when I am reminded of the verses of Jahannam, again I cry. Again, when I am reminded of the verses of Jannah, I start smiling again. It makes me smile. It puts a smile on my face. But again, when I remember the verses of Jahannam, I start to cry again. This is my situation all the time. This is subhanAllah. But you are a small kid and you are still afraid of Jahannam. Why? What's the reason? You're still young. 
You have nothing to worry about. So this youngster said, O oh, Malik ibn Dinar, when my mother used to light up any fire, I used to see that the small wood used to go into the fire to light the fire up first before the big wood. And I am afraid that Allah will put the small wood like me into fire to light up the fire of Jahannam. This was the situation of the youngster. And the youngsters of before, enjoy your life. Do whatever you want to. But do not go against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Rasulullah Do not allow your power to be a curse to you. Do not allow your eyesight to be a curse for you. Do not allow your ears to be a curse for you. Do not allow any part of your body to be a curse for you. Because this is what happened to Qawm Samud, Qawm Aad and other Qawms and nations that were destroyed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if we live in the way we are supposed to, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as it says here as well, amongst the seven that are under the shade of Allah on the day of judgment, the person who was young and righteous in this worldly life, Allah will give that person a place under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me, you and all the youngsters to practice righteously in this world, listening and looking at the Quran and Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa akhiru da'wan alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.